I um I kind of say yes to like one thing a month, like so. And then, oh, is that right? Okay, so you know, it just seems to like, me like you're all over the world, but uh, you know, well, you like to be I mean, the last to. the last two months I kind of have been like, and then next month I'm away a fair bit, but. I'll tell you what, July I'll be home. <laughs> okay, sounds good. Uh, well, why don't you just, uh, we've got lots of people listening in and we're eager to hear so many things about you, but uh, tell us a little bit about, I don't know, some things that are current in your life right now. Have you just been out on the road at a conference? I think you were somewhere just now. Tell us what's kind of current in Mia's life other than we'll get to all the album and the well, I mean, the thing that's always current in my life is kind of writing. Personal songs. world. Like, yeah. Is that what you're you doing? You know, like that's the thing that I'm super passionate about is song. So um, that's kind of what's going on. At the, it's always, it's, that's always what's going on. I mean, if you asked me 10 years ago or today, any day of the week, what I'm doing, I, w- I would be writing songs. But, I mean, at the moment, I'm, you know, I kind of teach, like, teach at conferences and, and like, lead worship kind of, like, you know, I say yes to about one thing a month, like, but um, I'm, in June, I'm going on tour with um, the Vertical Church Band, which will be great. I love those guys. We're going to be in Canada, so that'll be mm-hmm. great. I'm really looking forward to that. I love those guys. They're amazing. So. For sure, for sure. Yeah, you're, you seem to have uh, your name coming up in a, in a lot of different songs, you know, different churches, bands, artists people and it'll be like you know somewhere Mia Fields name just shows up in there and uh, so many different connections that you've been able to have and and influences with your song so so I don't know maybe we should just like head right into you know just giving us a a window into your world of songwriting and I think all people who are listening are musicians worship leaders you know at praise charts we're really trying to encourage people as uh, as songwriters. We're trying to not just be a place where people come come to buy other people's songs. Obviously, there's you know that's a lot of what happens. We buy songs from iTunes and listen yeah. to them kind of passively, or we go to praise charts or CCLI. We look for the top songs and just kind of plug it in and go. But there's a there's an you know there's another element of going. Like, what could I offer to this? You know, what's the totally. what's my lyric? What's my melody? And um, I don't know how much you know about, we've been doing this thing in Praise Charts called Song Quest, which has really been fun and encouraging. We invite people to uh, send us their songs that they've written, and we get hundreds of them. Uh, and we do this a couple of times a year. We get tons and tons of songs submitted, and we sort them through down to, you know, 25, and then we let people listen to them from, from our, our site and whittle that down to 10. And, uh, Who are you there? Yeah, hello? Sorry, I was cutting out. <laughs> That's all right. Okay. So anyways, I just yeah. wanted to say I'm we like... just finished our second song quest thing. It was super encouraging because the guy that won... Uh, he's actually a friend of ours with from Praise Charts, and he said this is like the best thing that's ever happened to me musically when he won. And he had like, I don't know, 2,000 Facebook shares on his song, and he was just blown away by how many people were sharing this lyric and melody that he had gotten around. So, so I just, even as I'm telling you right now, I get kind of shivers in my body because uh, I feel passionate about that you and I can spend some time this morning encouraging and uplifting people who want to write songs and have their own Absolutely. voice, you know, heard. So I mean, I'm not going to lie. I'll always be honest. Like, I'm not going to be like, I'm always like, I'm. people say I'm not really, like, I'm not necessarily nice, but I am kind. And I think anyone, <laughs> can, write, but anyone can write a song, but, like, we don't want churches full of terrible songs, like, that are, yeah. you know, because the same way that, you know, to be good at to be good at anything, you have to work at it. You know, so I, I like I always encourage people to work hard at it, that you can get good at it. Because I didn't have any of the skills. Like I think I had one one element of like songwriting came naturally to me, and everything else I had to work at. You know, but I I think if you work at it, you can do anything. Are you there? Hello. Did I lose you? Are you still there? 
Sorry, I don't know if yes, it's you or me. I'm, Your voice I cut out. I'm, but, I mean, I, okay. Okay. Uh, it sounds like I'm cutting out, so maybe, I don't know, this has never happened to me before in this area. So if it happens again, I'll try to move to another area. Sorry, people, okay. it's a, a bit choppy, but just let us know in the chat side, and, and I'll try to yes. adjust. So, um, so, so um, I think a question I, you know, I wouldn't mind starting with and just asking you is, there, it, I think there's an intimidation factor, even just you know, jumping off what you just said. If, if we start with, like, well, you don't want to write a song if it's a bad song. And so then no. I, you know, maybe I sit down and I think, well, I don't have like an awesome idea right now. And so if I don't, then I'm just not going to start. You know, maybe it's that typical writer's block or just the fear of actually stepping into something fresh. So maybe you could just help us uh, think through how to, you know, you want to write things that are quality and work at things, but you also have to get beyond yourself in order to get totally. you know, the song started, right? So. Help us totally. talk to us a little think, bit about that process. I think the first thing is just like being being willing to suck. You know, like I <laughs> I handed in like 50 songs that were terrible. Like I always tell everybody my first song was a rap song and it was dreadful. Like it was called Praise Revolution and I hope no one ever finds it because it's terrible. <laughs> um, so I think being willing to be like, you know, to not to not feel like your first song has to be your best song and not feel like, oh, if I didn't get it right the first time, it's not going to be good ever. Uh, one of the things that I um, I think is the, is the decider as far as, like, good songs and bad songs is perseverance and just, like, being willing to learn. I'm so glad that I, um, that I kind of, like, wrote a bunch of terrible songs and, like, got better and better because I saw that the more you work at it, the better you get. I always say it's like a muscle, you know. Like, if you go to the gym, like, once a year then then you'll like when you feel inspired you you will not you're not going to get great results but if you do it consistently even when you don't feel like it you're going to see results and i think songwriting's the same like um i wouldn't say that like you wait for inspiration to come i think you have to i think you have to like make it a discipline if you're really passionate about getting good at songwriting and that's kind of what i did i had like even when I was like, you know, at college and working and all that sort of thing, I had like these non-negotiable kind of moments in my week where I would tell people I was working and like, and then I would just work on songs. Because I think if you tell people that you're writing songs, they say, well, you can do that anytime. And then something will always come up there to replace it. So mm -hmm. I think like you, you kind of have to start at about deciding that you want to be good at, good at it and you want to work at it and understanding that like it, like so often like I think people are waiting for like God to drop songs out of heaven and I think he does that sometimes but I think more often like he's like a dad and he wants you to like give your heart and like say what you want to say to him and um yeah. and make something excellent for him you know I say it's like a dad giving like paper and crayons and glitter and glue to like a little kid and saying go for it you know and then you know, if the kid, like, spends time on it, like, there's something really amazing about kids spending time on it and putting their heart into it. So I think you have to start there. And then um, and then the next thing mm -hmm. is I just, I think a lot of the time people, like, don't, like, don't consolidate their ideas. And so they want to put all their best ideas into one song. And so the song ends up kind of being about, like, when Jesus returns and salvation and, like, living for the cause and, like, being brave and a bunch of other things. And like it doesn't really have a storyline, and I think that's, you know, when I when I tend to listen to people's songs from churches, it ends up being like a, a lot of thoughts, you know, in three minutes instead of just like going, okay, what's one central idea that I can just focus in on? You know, the best songs I think are are that you know songs that just have, you know, one central idea, and no matter what journey they take you on, they keep returning to that idea. So you know, like a yeah. song like Ten Thousand Reasons is a great example of that because. Every verse, every chorus, like everything points to that one idea of like I have like so many overwhelming reasons to keep on praising God, you know? Right, right, right. Very good. Hey, just as we continue talking about this, um, can can you kind of give me a, a window into a day, almost like a day in the life of Mia? Like what does it look like for you when you're into a songwriting day 
And, uh, you know, there's, I'm sure there's all these different processes going on. You've got melodies, you've got lyrics and progressions. You've probably got your iPhone, different lyric ideas that you're pulling out from different places. So can you just kind of walk yeah. us into, like, what does it actually look like for Mia? If you're in work mode, um, how are you, I don't know, just kind of describe that to us. Make it, like, really practical, tangible. Yeah. This is me in my living room, what it looks like, because uh, that's kind of how I I think. I just, I want a day in the life of Mia kind of talk, so. Okay. <laughs> Give us Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, every day has to start with breakfast, because I am the biggest breakfast <laughs> man, and if I don't eat, then I don't write. Um, okay. So, I, um, one, one thing that I think is important that is, is sometimes like for me, I don't, I rarely write at my house just because if I, if I write here, I find other things to do that would distract me. Um, and so to be honest, I, like I have, I have like places that I go to work. So I, I, I have a writer's room at Providence. And if you don't have like, you know, a different place you can go to get out of your, your natural space, then just create a space where you're not going to be distracted. Um, yeah. so I kind of tend to like, you know, for me, like, um, I, I think having good, like, a motivation to finish a song and, and parameters for why I write the song, like, is a good thing. Like, I, I won't really go to work to write a song for no reason. I'll always go to work to write and always, like, you know, go to write a song for a reason because I think it motivates you to finish. Um, there's yeah. so many people who write songs and, like, they've been like, oh, well, you know, I've been working on this song for, like, six months and I think, well, why don't you just finish it, you know? Yeah. And start a yeah. new song. Like, you could have a whole album by now, mate. Like, you could have, like, 20 songs for your church, but you're working on one song. Um, right. So I think, you know, so for me, I go to I go to work, and to be honest, most of the time I'm working with an artist um, and a producer or just, you know, a producer. And so, like, you know, we'll have, like, two people, two or three people in the room. And, you know, often I'll, I'll say to the artist, you know, like, well, like, hey, so what, do you have any ideas that you're wanting, wanting to work on? Do anything that you're passionate about, and I think you know, especially in terms of co-writing, it's a great thing to walk into a room and like offer the floor to the other person first. So you know, hey, like how good can I serve point. You? Someone like, write that down because that's really great. How can I serve you? Like because co-writing, as well, is really like not that dependent on talent. It's really dependent on like how good you are at serving somebody else and and what your into like your interpersonal relationship, uh, interpersonal yeah. relational skills are like. Um, yeah. And I think that's everything. You have to remember that, like, you know, at the end of the day, God didn't die for songs. He kind of died for people. So <laughs> you kind of <laughs> got to put people first anyway. So, um, but I'll go into a room and I'll say to them, hey, do you have any any ideas that you're wanting to work on? I always say to everyone, I'm a Jonathan, not a David. Like, I like to serve other people and, like, see them win. Serve the kings but, um, of the music industry, you Hating know? And writing. Get all this down. Sorry. <laughs> um, and um, and so so I'll offer the floor to them first, but you know sometimes like you know if they've been writing all week, sometimes artists will have been like writing a bunch for their album, and they'll they'll have run they'll just kind of be a bit burned out with ideas, you know. Um, right. So I guess like if you're passionate about what you're doing, like one thing I always do is I always come with ideas, so that if they don't have anything, I can always bring something so that it's going to be productive. Um, it's really and and like usually I've kind of narrowed down my ideas for like that person or for the song we're going to write today. Because if I bring like a hundred ideas, it's really it's way harder to pick and to start somewhere because you could you know there's probably like forty ideas there that are good. So to be honest, most of the time I'll have like three ideas, like you know that I think these are all great ideas. I love these, and like I'll bring those, and like the one that we all kind of are excited about is the one that we'll work on. Um, yeah. I tend to even like narrow things down. Like I th I think it's great to always, no matter whether you're a musician and you start with music or whether you're a lyricist and you start with lyric, I think you know the, it's it's really hard to write a song and then come back to a hook later on. Like I think you're way better off like deciding where you're going to go with a song. So I always say like a, a great roadmap is, is picking a theme like and being really clear about what your theme is. And then to even narrow that down a bit more, um, one thing I do is I'll pick a theme and then I'll try and find, straight away I'll try and find a lyric hook or a title for the song. So, um, you know, like a great example is like I remember, you know, like great ideas spark great ideas. So, you know, I will write down everything. Like and I'll never ever, even whether it's a, a melodic theme or it's a lyric theme, I'll never have like a vague idea written down. Like 
I'm going to just tell everybody mm. out there, if, if you have a melodic idea and you record it in your iPhone, don't just save it as new recording number 25,000. Like even just give it a little title, like, you know, or give it a little like, you know, hey, this is a worship idea that, that feels like this, you know, because I think it helps you to keep track of your ideas and not like, it's, it just sucks to kind of like overlook your own genius when you when it just yeah. is like unorganized and i think for yeah. creative people we can tend to be a bit unorganized so like setting yourself up to win that way is great so one thing i do is i've got like a, a whole page in my iphone of like just lyric ideas but like they're yeah. narrowed down enough like where they're they're all titles you know so for example like i'll even yeah. save certain titles for people and 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 write songs that make sense to certain people so you know, if I if I hear a great idea, I'll think that's a great idea and I'll write it down straight away. So, for example, there's yeah. like a, um, you know, that Matt Redman song, Never Once, you know, that um, he and Jason Ingram wrote. Never once do we ever walk alone. I loved that song when I first heard it and I was like, I remember being at the recording and like just bawling my eyes out because I was like, really? oh, you've never left, you've never left me yeah. And I remember yeah. thinking, you know, if I was going to say this, how would I say this? You know, if I was going to write this song, then how would I write it? Um, which I think that's the beautiful thing about songs is like just because it's been written doesn't mean it can't be rewritten, you know, because there's something great about you bringing your angle and like your understanding and all that sort of thing. And I remember writing down like um, just hearing that never once and remember thinking, you know, if I was going to write this song, I might say not for a moment. So I just wrote down that idea like that little like, you know, like I'd kind of like packed it down into like not just like a theme, but even just like, you know, this one lyric hook, not for a moment. And then I remember writing with Meredith Andrews and Jacob Suter and um, and saying to them, like, hey, I've got this idea like, for a worship song. You know, the idea is not for a moment. And it would I would love it to keep going back to that one idea, not for a moment did you forsake me, not for a moment. And then we ended up writing this song. And to be honest, the song came in like an hour and a half because huh. you know, I, we'd, got, we'd come in with like a really clear idea of like the sort of song we, we wanted to write and, and had a really clear scene. And I think that's like how to use your time productively, you know, because it always disappoints me when I hear people say, you know, well, I've spent like four years on this song. And I think, well, maybe you just didn't know where you were going. It's like going on a road trip and not really knowing where you're going. But if you know, like, hey, I want to get to the beach, then you'll know to drive. For me in Nashville, yeah. I'd be like, I want to get to the beach. I'm going to drive south. That just makes sense, you know. So mm, very good. For everybody out there, like, you know, just like starting with a really clear theme, you know, and a theme that like, Themes should like generate like an, an emotion or a feeling, you know, in people, and that, and a theme should also be something people can relate that, that something people can relate to. Like, you know, I don't know, I don't know how G rated or PG rated this webinar is, but like, there's something to like, you know, like I'm not going to write a song on um on celibacy because it rules out like half the church, you know, because half the church is married. <laughs> So it has to be something that people can relate to, you know, and something that helps yep. them communicate with the way the way they feel about God and and the, the the seasons that they're walking through. You know, there's there's something beautiful about songs like Blessed Be, you know, because it it's applicable for every season. You know, like the the valley season and the and the season where like you know you're seeing like the promise of God in your life. So I want to like just remind everybody like make it personal but make sure that it's something that people can that everyone can relate to and that that like at the end of the day points everybody to god hmm. really good can you tell me uh, a little bit i'm just shift around a few different themes here one thing i i was hearing and really liking is the whole concept of coming with an idea and it sounds to me like an idea could be as as small as maybe five or six words that's just a hook, but at least it's something to, to build on or or maybe oh, it's just a melody or something. Could we could you just talk a little bit about that that maybe let's flesh out like is an idea? Well, I think like great ideas spark great ideas, you know. Um It could actually be something words... Yeah, go ahead. Sorry? Oh, okay. Yeah, just tell um, us okay. Oh, you go. <laughs> okay, I will go. Sorry. Sometimes we get into this, so I just want you to tell us about uh, about what what makes up a good idea. Uh, so, because I'm trying to like take down some of the barriers to, well, this maybe is enough to start on. You know, it might be a little melody, little hook, a little phrase, something like that. I really like what you were saying about that. Coming to the table with something to offer. 
um, yeah. the idea of yeah, an idea. I think it, I think um, if you think it's a good idea, then it's worth chasing. And if it ends up being terrible, then that's okay. Think of a new idea. You know, I think sometimes mm-hmm. we want we want to, we want to know it's going to work before we'll try. And I don't think there's any faith in that. Like I think. Like, we're, we're supposed to be living in this lifestyle of faith. So, like, what's the worst that can happen? You, like, pursue an idea and it doesn't work. Like, I have, like, iTunes full of songs that don't work, you know, and full right. of, like, you know, and the, and the better, I've got better and better at, like, identifying, like, what's a good idea and what's maybe just, like, maybe not. Or maybe maybe it was a good idea and I just and I just didn't get the song that day. And there's been so many days where I'll, I'll be like, yeah, like, I... I have this idea for this song and I've written the song and it, and it hasn't turned out like what I thought it would. So I've rewritten the song the next day or rewritten the song a week later. And I think it's good to like, if you think it's a good idea, write it down like and capture it because you just never know. Because sometimes some of the, the ideas that you think are like are the least, uh, are the least great, like, you know, um, end up being the songs that are like home runs. And sometimes the ideas you think are amazing, like, aren't that great you know so I've had like both happen you know I remember I remember having this one really amazing idea and I thought it was like like the most incredible idea and the song turned out terrible and it went nowhere and then I had this other idea that I thought you know there might be something to that like I remember having um just this title of like you know the title he knows my name and and feeling like oh this like this isn't really a fresh idea like it doesn't feel like it's like groundbreaking, but it could be. Like, and I feel like it's something people need to hear. So I think it's always worth chasing those kind of ideas, you know. And sometimes when you like, sometimes when you like, when you kind of establish what your idea is, it will even like give you hints about like to like other like uh, I guess other things that your song is going to be. So for example, like you know, like when you have like a, maybe a great lyric idea you kind of already is like you know giving you hints about what the music is going to need to be like if you have a song, if you have an idea about like singing for joy you automatically know that your song is not going to be like a slow ballad like that has minor lots of minor chords in it you know um i think as well like sometimes having like a like some sort of like song form like really helps you know one thing that i love doing is going like man like i'd love to write a song like this you know um and I think that's really helpful for people, like, because I think sometimes we're waiting for people to critique our songs and tell us that it's right. And I think, well, but why wouldn't you just find a song that, you know, that you go, well, this song is kind of similar to what I'm trying to write, and not don't uh, don't rip off the song, but use it as like almost like a meter for like, does this work, you know? So let's say for example, you love that your church loves the song, um, Oceans, you know, then. Then yep. like, and, you, and you've got a song that you've written in, written and you want to do it in church and it kind of feels like that sort of a song where it's like, you know, it, it's like kind of, you know, ballady and then it has like a big bridge, you know, like maybe you've written a song like that. Well, like me- measure it up to up to a song like Oceans and go like, you know, does, does my song work as well as this song? And if it doesn't, well, then what can I, what, what kind of um, things can I identify in, in, in that song that works that mine doesn't do? And like, you know, songwriting is so much about developing your instincts, you know, like and learning to identify what works and why it works and being able to put some of those things with, in, into your own songwriting. And I kind of, mm-hmm. I've done that for years, you know, like, and even like, you know, being able to break things down. So, I mean, I'll give you like the, the backstory on like, on a song like that kind of, you would never ever pick that I kind of like use this song as the as the meter or as the, the template for um for for the song but I think it's great for people to hear because it, it makes it feel like less mysterious and like oh anyone I can do that you know yeah um, yes okay. so for a song like um you know Francesca Battistelli's song he knows my name which P.S. she's just the biggest legend on the planet like so just nothing yeah. good thing to say about her um and she's a really um, she's an amazing writer in an in and of herself um but we, you know, we when we were writing He Knows My Name, we came with this, like, idea of, like, He Knows My Name. And I remember thinking, like, you know, Franny has a bunch of songs that are, like, you know, they're kind of, like, quirky pop songs. And I was, like, um, man, it'd be so cool to, like, give her a song. Like, one of my favorite pop songs is the Natasha Bedingfield song, Unwritten, um, you know, which, you know, is, like, it's kind of an older song. But I thought, you know, the genius of that song is that, to be honest, it hasn't really dated that much, you know. Like you know, some pop songs mm-hmm. are like over it in a year, 
But like every time I still hear unwritten, I think this is so current and it still feels really good, even though it's old. And I was like, man, it'd be so cool to write a song for Franny that felt like that, that it felt like it didn't date very fast and it felt like positive and like motivational because that's how unwritten feels to me. So I started yeah. going through like even like the form of unwritten and I was like, okay, well, why, what, what does this song do and why does it work? And, you know, I, all I have is this like one title, He Knows My Name. And I, and I was like, well, okay, well, Unwritten has this, like, kind of, like, conversational kind of verse that says, you know, um, you know, read some Byron Shelley, uh, read some Byron Shelley and Keith, recited it over a hip-hop beat. It's kind of, like, you know, still interesting but super conversational. And I was like, okay, like, well, it would be cool to do, like, a really conversational verse, you know. Then today in a conversation in the mirror face, you know, it's super conversational. And then I was like, okay, well, what else does this song Unwritten do that, like, makes it makes the song work? And I was like, well, you know, it does this, this pre-chorus that's, like, super interesting, like, and super fun, and it feels like it's building and going somewhere. Um, so it, it does that whole thing. Staring at the blank page before you open up a dirty wind, which is, like, super cool, and it, and it feels like it's, like, crescendoing to something. And I was like, man, I want to do something like that where it's still really interesting and not just, like, a... Oh, a nothing moment, you know, because pre-choruses sometimes can be a nothing mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. So then we were like, okay, well, like, interesting, like, true to who you are, you saw my heart and made something out of nothing. And then, you know, like, and then it's just got this chorus that just hits you really hard. Like, so, um, you know, feel the rain on your skin, no one else can feel it for you. I don't need my name in life, I'm famous. You know, it's got this chorus that lifts and that feels, like, really good. So to be honest, you know, like having a template for yourself is really great. Like maybe you're, maybe you're trying to write an anthem, an anthemic kind of song, and so, and you like maybe you take a song like Love Ran Red and you go, okay, well, what is it about this song that works? You know, well the the verses are like, you know, super personal, but they still have tension in them. You know, and then that chorus, like is like super easy to sing, like an anthemic, and um and uses kind of like short phrasing and like and repetition so maybe you go like okay well maybe i'll put some repetition in my song because repetition seems to be easy for people to sing so i think it's really good to like give yourself if you don't have parameters for your song give yourself as many parameters you, as you can because it's amazing how when you give yourself parameters you'll hit the mark yes hey mia i just That's have to uh, apologize here because I'm just going to describe my situation. I've taken my cell phone out into a park and I'm literally pacing all over because sometimes I know I'm cutting in and out. So appreciate that you keep talking while I try and, you know, keep listening and uh, participating here. But are you hearing me okay right now? Yeah, it's great. Okay, good. Okay, so so anyways, this doesn't happen often like this. You're doing awesome, and I'm actually getting lots of text and feedback going, this is really great. Ryan, your voice is a little choppy, but Mia, keep going. So, so, uh, okay. so thank you. So, sorry that so there I you go. Bit like, sorry that I sound a little bit, like, mannish this morning, but I've, yeah. I've been seeing a weekend, and so, like, I literally, I know I sound like a, like a Muppet, but, like, oh. just how it's going to be. I feel like Grover of Sesame Street. Yeah. <laughs> It's no problem. You're you're giving us great stuff. Hey, I just wanted to hey. offer out this this is a little thing that I stumbled on yesterday and I don't know if you've ever heard of this Mia, but um have you ever heard of the website uh or the little app called Hook Theory? Has that ever come across? I mean, I just stumbled on this yesterday. Have you ever heard of it? I have not. Maybe I should. Maybe okay. I should go down low. Well, okay. <laughs> so this is just I'm just going to throw this out a little freebie for people I stumbled on it yesterday, and I was like, "Oh my goodness, this is quite quite amazing." So it's it's uh, hooktheory.com, and the thing that I uh, initially really liked was it basically this guy has created this program where he's been able to analyze, you know, four thousand songs. Uh, all oh, you there? And just analyze, like, what are the chord progressions? What are the melodies? How are they flowing? So you take a, you know, a chord like the one chord and then say, well, what percentage of the time does it go to the four chord or the five chord or the two or the three? And then, so always then you can click. The four, guys. Can, always go to the four. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. But then, so then you actually can click on this little app 
you take it to the four and um and then it says well from here you know 23 percent of songs tend to go to the two and 48 percent tend to go to the six and and so then you click on your next chord and you keep going and it's you know, it just sort of is analyzing all the songs according to the melodic and chord structure underneath them. So, you know, well, I know you haven't I mean, heard of it, but I'm just throwing this out as a little, like, I just, is really I just cool. I just looked it up just then, and, um, and I will say, like, I think it's really amazing to, like, have this sort of stuff as tools to help you. Same way that I think yeah. having, like, a bit of music theory is really helpful. Um, yeah. I think if you get your head space too much into this like into analyzing everything like I think sometimes it can hinder your creative process so I would okay. say like make sure that you like you have a good balance where you're not like I don't know like I think at the end of the day like some of the best songs I've written I didn't I didn't know anything you know um, and I think sometimes like the more I don't know I just I can see like the, the, the mathematical people out there like getting really really mechanical about it and you, it takes some of the joy out of like songwriting if you get super mechanical about things but I will say like I one of the one of the most helpful things I've I've found is actually to like is to like analyze analyze things after I've written a song and then take it back and use it in the editing process so instead of using it at the beginning like you know I would use it at the at the end so like maybe like you've written a song and it doesn't feel like it's working as great as it could well then maybe you go to like websites like Cook Theory and you go okay like well, well, why does this work? Oh, okay, like, well, I didn't do that in my song. Maybe I could, like, tweak the song. And, like, I think it's great to use that sort of thing, like, as in your editing process. Um, yeah. I, I do think it's a great thing, like, great right. Like, I feel like anyone who is great at anything, they're great at learning. And, like, that's one thing that I've been super committed to is learning and learning from everybody. You know, I think co-writing is, like, a great way to learn how to be better at something that you're not good at. You know, for example, I, I, I always got, like, you know, kind of boxed as a lyricist, you know, and like even now, like I still, you know, that's still like my, like the flag that I fly high is that I'm, like I'm good at lyric and I'm quick at lyric. Um, but yeah. the amazing part about that is I end up being partnered with people who are great at, at melody and great at rhythm and great at meter and great at phrasing. And so it's made me so much better at all that sort of stuff. Like to, to the point now where if I didn't even write a lyric, I could still write a great melody, you know? So I think co-writing is a great way of like getting better at like what you're not good at. And I think there's some amazing, like <clears throat> I think you have in your life what you value. So, you know, people that come to me and say, well, I'm not good at it. I think, well, yeah, but you don't value becoming good at it because if you valued becoming good at it, good at it you would like look for resource, you know, because that's exactly what I did. Like, I was I wasn't good at any of it, and I just like I just look, became a learner, you know. So right. I think there's some amazing books out there, like on songwriting. So if, if you are looking for books on songwriting, um, especially for for the church, like, and um, but even in just in general, I think Paul Belosh has a book called God Songs that is out of this world amazing. I think everybody should get that book because it just it takes it takes some of the, it demystifies songwriting without taking the beauty out of it, you know, without making it mechanical. And I think he just explains it so well. So whether you've been writing songs for 90 years or whether you've been writing songs for nine minutes, like I think his book is really amazing. Like um, Hillsong has a book as well um, by Amanda Ferguson where all the songwriters contri have contributed called Songwriting and it's also really great. And then there's courses online. You can take um, Pat Patterson from Berkeley um, has a bunch of resources out and does even online courses and he's fantastic at teaching on songwriting. So I think like even like the fact that everyone who's tuned in today like to just hear, I think like well like bravo to you like and I'm like giving you a round of applause in my own house like because I think it's so great to to be a learner you know and I any opportunity I have to learn I'll just I'll weigh in on it and go in and go and lean into it because I just think I want to be. Hey, do you feel like this album that you've just done um, has that been part of you trying to step out of your boxes? I'm not just a lyricist, uh, you know. I, I mean, I haven't even really seen you as a performer or an artist. You've just been a songwriter. So yes. maybe we could just segue into that a little bit and tell us, uh, walk us through the process of. Mia even stepping out of her own box, you know, and trying to move forward in her life uh, as far as in other, you know, other realms, like you're talking to us about trying to, you know, not get stuck in a rut, and you're even... Yeah. Motivated. So, 
Yeah. Well, you know, I I think for me, like the um, I've I've always, you know, like I said, I'm a Jonathan, not a David. So being the David like really freaks me out. Um, I like to serve. I like to be number one at being number two. Um, and to be honest, like I don't think I don't think of like this like stepping into this artist shoes as a transition, like from being number number one at being number two, if that makes sense. Um, I, for me, that the, the step of faith was having to get behind a microphone and sing. I'm always so happy to lead worship, but to like I this like being in a studio. I even hate doing demos. Like I, it just really freaked me out because I just didn't want to do it. But it felt like it felt like kind of like time. And I, to be honest, I'd have like a bunch of people say, "When are you going to do something? When are you going to do something?" And and I kind of was like, "Well, I'm not. Like, stop asking." Like, and um and I just like. At the end of the day, I like you know the, our church here in Nashville, the Belonging Co. Um, it kind of disarmed some things for me. I'd always led worship, um, but I think I'd like really freaked myself out and really told myself I can't sing, and so I I'd I'd kind of pulled back on a little a little bit and just really like thrown myself into writing. And I remember Henry and Alex Seely like are so amazing. Like and like it's nice to have some fellow Aussies in in a, in Nashville. Like and they they were like. You know, when we started our church here, like it, it had six people, you know, in a basement, and so, and it wasn't even called a church, you know, it was just like a prayer meeting. And they said, "Hey, do you want to lead worship?" And I was like, "Well, for six people, yeah, I can lead worship for six people because because I, I can lead in my pajamas. It's going to be awesome, you know." And I think it like disarmed it for me a little bit and took some of the pressure off, and it and it made me like lean into something different and lead from a really different place. Um, so once that happened, it kind of it kind of felt like oh, yeah, I could do this. And then people were saying, like, you know, when are you going to do something? Would you ever do an album? And and so I just kind of threw a, threw a bit of a fleece out to God, and I think that's a great thing to do. Like, if if you push doors open, then, like, anyone can close them. But if God opens them, then, like, there'll be a real ease to it. And especially, you know, like, this is something I probably could have done, twenty, like, you know, 10 years ago. I said 20 years ago, and, like, it makes me sound like I'm 82, but I'm not. Um, but I... You know, it's something I could have done 10 years ago, but I love that this is the right season for it and there's been, like, a real ease to it. And, like, um, every everything that's been a challenge, I've just said, God, I need you to, to move that mountain. And to be honest, he has. And I, I kind of put a fleece out and said, God, well, I want this producer and I want I want this label behind it. And I kind of had this mental list of checklist of what I wanted to happen. And to be honest, it all just kind of happened. And so, so that was, like, kind of like a green light for me from God. And, um, but I will say, like, now, I, now I feel like I'm, I'm getting where the, the fearless comes from. Like now it makes sense. You know, the, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm assuming <laughs> that part of it is, you know, this, it is part this of it. girl like, who is like, you know, got comfortable writing songs, writing lyrics and always letting somebody else, you know, take the microphone. And now she has to get that kind of nudged up, you know. It's like you have a voice as well. So I mean, because your fearless song, it's yeah. it's like it's very bold. It's perfect. Just I've listened to it what? over and over and over. Like this girl is just saying no to fear, you know. So Come maybe on. maybe just tell us a little bit about about that because um, people are texting well, me going, man, she is nailing it. This is perfect. So Come just on. keep going. Yeah. <laughs> um. Well, to be honest, like you know, I. Um, I'll talk a bit about fearless in a second, but like to be honest, this whole thing has been like I think it's really good for you to get out of your comfort zone. So for you, if if you're at home and you're like my comfort zone is like that, I write one song every three months and I show my husband and that's it. Like then I think maybe it's time that you like took your song to somebody who's going to give you some, who's not going to be nice to, you, but is going to be honest and help you get better. Maybe you tried and maybe you did your song at like. At like, I don't know, maybe you took your songs and, like, played them in a coffee shop. Maybe that's a great step of faith for you. Maybe you, like, do an item at church, like, or show your worship past to your song. Because I think God is never, like, comfort never gets you very far. Like, it, it and it, to be honest, it makes you discontent and it makes you, like, I think it makes you ungrateful, actually. Like, so I'm, like, I think stepping out is the thing, you know. So, so for me, like, I, even though, so for me, stepping out has been a big thing. But I will say, like, you know, people are like, well, why the transition from, like, writer to artist? And I'm like, oh, no, there's no transition. Like, 
I'm just a writer who has decided to carry a few of the songs. That's all. But 90% of what I do will still be writing for other people. I'm just being obedient to this one thing that I feel like God was saying, okay, get out of the boat. And, um, yeah. And like, and carry. And a people, few people want to just put you in into another box. That's what it seems like. You're either a writer or you an artist. Which box are you? I need a box to put you in. And you're like, well, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not in, the, in that. I'm in. I'm in the God circle, so there are, there are no boxes. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. the amazing Amen. thing is you, when you just do what, you know, just do what would please him. Like, you know, and, and for me, yeah. I'm like not, I'm not tracking on like, you know, I'm not one of, I, to be honest, I don't, I don't look at charts. I don't really look at like iTunes. I don't really look at CCLI. I don't look at any of it because I just think at the end of the day, like I just want to be obedient to God and like, and it'll reap the fruit that it's yeah. going to reap. So for me, the best stuff to to get back is, you know, I had like, you know, even got a, like a report the other day, like that was just like a technical report about some radio stuff and um, about like, you know, will they or won't they play a song? And I was just like, it just doesn't, it just doesn't matter. Like, who cares? Like, yeah. like if they meant to play it, they'll play it and God will open the door, whether even if they didn't, you know, they'll open the door. So, and I think that's true for everybody. Like, you know, I would, don't be, don't be deterred by setbacks. You know, just, it's amazing how God will make a way anyway. Um, and even just getting back to that, like, so I'm not, I'm not transitioning from writer to artist. I'm just, I've just, I'm a writer who's decided to carry a few songs, but really like, you know, people are like, well, are you worried you're going to have to tour heaps now and la la la. And I, you know, even the label is like, are you going to like, you know, tour and all that sort of stuff. And I keep saying like, I'll, I'll go and lead worship because that's what I love. Like, but I'm not going to be away for months and months. And to be honest, my hope is that the songs will travel and, like, I really hope that there is people that, like, I hope there's people even that are listening today that, like, if you've heard the song and you want to do it in church, I hope that, that you will do it better than, I, than I've ever done it. I hope you put some YouTube cover up and make me look like I can't sing. I hope that, like, there's 16-year-olds out there who, like, you know, I don't know, like, do some performance at their, like, for their school exam and, like, like slay the audience, like, with how good yeah. that they, they just carried that, you know, because I think... For me, at the end of the day, like, I'm not trying to, like, the whole goal of this, even, like, doing an artist thing, like, you have to decide what you're going to bring. And for me, like, the thing I want to bring and the thing I've noticed in worship music is it, it, it's getting slightly more and more complicated, um, which I think is amazing. But I also kind of go, you know, for me, I want to I wanna bring songs that, like, that people in, in churches of 20 people can do and it still carries the same thing as it does on a record, you know? I want like a 14 year old to be able to sit in their bedroom and play this song and for it to carry the same thing as it as it does, you know, in as it does on an album, you know? I don't want people to be like, oh, like the song's amazing, but I can't do it, you know? So. Yeah, I totally agree. I, I would like for you to take us, walk us through a few of the songs that you've decided to, uh, to um, what what was the word you used? You were going to carry. <laughs> I like that word. Carry, yes. So I've got Ashes, Christ is Risen, Fearless. I mean, we, we can, let's just talk about a few of them that are, are dear to your heart, especially songs like Christ is Risen, we've known and sung. I've led that song so many times. And oh, I love, cool. you know, you and, uh, and Matt, Matt Marr. Oh, yeah, he's he's great. And, and when I, I see you him... Yeah. Matt Mark carries all things well. So like he really doesn't need anybody else to carry that song. But I um I just was like I love this song and it was like Walk it's us into significant... Walk... Yeah. Oops, sorry. That's all right. I'm just I wanna just give you the floor to kinda of walk through a few of these songs. Tell us tell us the stories of why they were ones that you wanted to include on this um on this album. Yeah. Well, to be honest, like, you know, most labels, the way that they work is, like, you know, you kind of hand in songs and then, like, an A&R person helps you pick the songs. Um, But to be honest, um, we didn't do that. (laughs) We kind of, like, handed in the album afterwards. And I have, like, an amazing A&R person. And she just, like, you know, when we handed in and said, oh, we've already recorded the songs, and she was like, oh, cool, all right. Like, she just trusted me. And I think that's the, the beauty of coming in as a writer, not as a writer first, not an artist, is they trusted me with songs. Um, right. And Jason Ingram was amazing about, you know, Jason Ingram and Jonathan Smith, who produced the album, were just amazing about, like, just knowing and helping to, like, just bring what we felt like 
needed to it needed to be because I think when you only have five songs, like you want to be pretty careful about what you pick. Like, um, so Christ is risen. Like, was it, it just was a song that I really loved for a long time and like has been a significant song for me, just to be a part of, you know, and 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 like to see what it's done in the church, you know. I I love like. I just loved the song and like it was just such mm-hmm. a, I mean, Matt Ma doesn't need anyone to finish his songs because he's such a genius, but I love that he believes in community and believes in the, the, the in co-writing, you know, so I love the song, but I, you know, every time someone leads it, um, it's always a boy and I was like, girls know that they can sing this song, right? Like, they know it's not too hard to sing, but I think they hear that octave jump and yeah. they freak out. And yeah, so I was right. like, well, maybe I'll just, I'll give them like a, like my whole goal in everything is accessibility. So I was like, I'm just going to give people just another version that like, that, you know, maybe helps make it more accessible. Like, you know, for, not for girls necessarily, but like for a song like that, like just, it gives it another, another angle and another version, like for people to be like, man, I could do that. Like, that's easy. I could do that. Um, So, I mean, that's why that song ended up on the album. It just is a song that I loved. And to be honest, it's a song that people were kind of familiar with. So I think it kind of helps bridge the gap of like, oh, this person's a writer and I know her songs, but I maybe don't know her. So, but... Um, but I mean, it's interesting with the song. I noticed that you you didn't carry the, what I would call that melodic hook of, from Matt's version, you know, that... Yeah. And so you sort of moved on from that. It's it's like it, yeah, and it really it feels up. like a fresh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, every version I've heard has that that hook, and I was like, well, if we can't think of a better hook, then we'll do that hook. But I just was like, it'd be so cool to start it where it feels like just up and victorious, you know, because that's what the song is. I think Easter people do that song at Easter, and I'm like, hey, everyone, you know, the cross is relevant year round, right? Yeah, <laughs> um, right. Yeah. Yeah. So good. I was like, well, let's make it like fun and up, and I love like that's like kind of feels like being like saying sucked into the enemy, you know, which I'm like that's what the song's about, you know, saying like sucked in, you lost. <laughs> um, yeah. And like, people like hmm. being like joyful about the victory that they have in Christ, you know. So, but um, I guess like you know some of the songs that like you know I said I'd talk a bit about fearless. Um, fearless is about like kind of stepping out in faith, but also it's um, when I first moved to America, I'd never struggled with anxiety. And um, I moved to America and started struggling with anxiety really badly. And it, anyone who knows me, really? knows, I mean, you can you can even hear, like, I mean, I feel like what you see is what you get with me. So anyone who's listening, you automatically go, like, I think you can assume that I'm not the sort of person that, like, I'm pretty direct and I'm not the sort of person that has panic attacks. And I started having panic attacks and, like, being so crippled by fear that I, like, you know, I would... I would drive somewhere that I was supposed to be and like sit in the car for an hour trying to like motivate myself to get out of the car and walk inside. And I'm just not like that. I'm not intimidated by by new people or or new situations. I'm not like that. And so I knew it was something that was like bigger than just, um, bigger than just feeling awkward, you know, because I'm really happy to be the most awkward person in the room. Um, And so I, it started like kind of taking over a little bit and, and I just remember, I remember driving to the doctors three times to like go and talk to them about going on medication for anxiety. And I couldn't even get out of the car to walk inside. And, um, and I just mm. remember talking to um, our pastors, Alex and Henry, about it and just saying like, you know, this is like, I, I don't know how to get free of this. Like, I remember Alex just saying to me, well, God wants to set you free from this. And even that was like so confronting for me because I was like, it made me feel like, yes, I know that, but I don't know how to get there. And so like that is even it's giving me more anxiety. And um, Mm. and she goes, you know what? She goes, you don't have to freak out about this. Like she goes, let's just go and pray about it. And I was like, okay. And she goes, ultimately God's plan is for you to be free. And like, and and even anyone who's listening, if you struggle with anxiety and if you're on medication or if you're seeing a therapist or or whatever you're doing, I think like whatever your journey is, like God's ultimate plan for you is to be free. I think there's something great about being courageous, but I think, there is a, it's a whole different level to walk into something without fear. Um, Mm -hmm. So um, I remember just getting prayer like one night and like, you know, when God speaks to something, he disarms it and uproots it completely. So it doesn't have room to grow in your life anymore. And that's what love does is love goes straight to the, straight to the heart, you know? And, 
and like when love speaks, like it, it disarms it and, and pushes out fear where fear doesn't have any more room to occupy anything anymore. And, you know, like God spoke to the root of my fear, which it's funny how sometimes we can't even put our finger on what it is. And like for me, it was like um, not wanting to let people down and um, mm. and feeling like consumed with not wanting to let people down. And, and I remember just Alex prayed for me and then she just got this one word for me and she just goes, you know, Mia, I feel like God is saying, just do what would please him. And honestly, like I have not struggled with anxiety since. And I'm and like mm. I'm not saying like, you know, get a sentence and then like everything will be okay. But I am saying that like when God does the work, you know, it, it's a it's a finished work, you know. And so any time I even feel like I'm I'm walking into a situation where where there's the potential to be anxious, I just keep thinking, just do what would please me, just do what would please me and so then like the, the couple of weeks after in church, we were singing in church and I started singing this thing, no fear in the crashing waves, no fear when the cost is great, no fear in the midnight hour. You've given me a spirit of power. I just kind of started singing that in the prophetic. And um, and then we ended up writing a song around it because I was like, you know, I think I'm not the only person in in, in North America who is, and, and in the world who is struggling with anxiety. I think it's like something that's very crippling to people. And so I was like, well, I'm, I'm going to confront that because I – have been mm-hmm. set free from it so I'm going to confront that and you know and hopefully there'll be an anthem that people can sing over over themselves and like when people are struggling with, with anxiety they can sing it over themselves and see and see it begin to like the truth of it begin to have a have work in their life and like take place in their life until so like until one day they just go you know what actually I am fearless I don't I actually don't have any fear about things like anymore that's amazing hmm. how about uh that one a little bit as the maybe we'll just kind of round out the album with those three songs Christ is Risen Fearless Ashes being a kind of I guess you'd call it the title track but so give us a window into that one a little bit Um, well Ashes to be honest like you know I said a great idea can spark a great song and um, I just always really love the title Ashes you know I love that scripture like, like you know he makes beauty out of ashes like so I just always had this title, Ashes Saved, you know, because I think it's such a beautiful, I kind of just like the word, you know. Um, and so, you know, and there's, there's definitely words like that. Like I remember, you know, I, we, I wrote a song with Chris um, Chris Kalala a couple of weeks ago um, for Jesus Culture, and, and I just love the word fierce. And I was like, that's such a cool thought, your love is fierce. Man, that's awesome. And so yeah. I... You know, so so good I good words that like, can spark a whole idea and it's uh, it's crazy how like you then will attach the words to like maybe your own experience, which is what happened with Ashes. You know, I wrote I wrote that with Jason Ingram and um and I just to be honest came and I said, you know, I've got this idea and the idea is Ashes and I just love the title. I'd love to write a song called Ashes. And he was like, Okay, great, like what would you want it to be about? And I just I started like just thinking about like the last kind of last kind of couple of seasons and you know one thing that I've I feel like God has really dis- um, delivered me from and like really done a healing work in my life about is like um, is disappointment you know and I think everybody that's mm. something everyone can relate to is that like you know being disappointed in some area of their life you know and um, for me I've never been disappointed in like in songs or in like you know or in like you know the, the places God has placed me like I feel so grateful to have been able to, you know, be at Hillsong Church for 10 years and then to be in Nashville for five years. Like, I am so grateful for that. Just, there wasn't disappointment attached there, but there was disappointment attached to some other things. And um, and so, like, I, I, I really, like, God did, like, such a healing work where it changed even my expectation. Like, because I think when you're disappointed, you go into things expecting to be disappointed. And at, right at the very core of it was, like, that I would felt like God had, let, God had let me down. When that just wasn't true, you know, and so God did it like a real big healing work. So I said, you know, because that's like something that I've walked through, I'd love to like attach ashes to that. And just like I, I, I can really see how God has like, you know, like every time I've like I've I've wanted to stay in my own disappointment, God has said, you know, get up and like sing like and, and find a reason to be mm. grateful. And he's called mm-hmm. me out of my sadness and out of my like woe is me kind of attitude, you know, and I think – it's amazing because, you know, when you, no matter what season you're in, you'll find like the Holy Spirit saying, look up, look up, look up, you know, like find a reason to be grateful. And like just getting that revelation on like, you know, the thing that really like helps walk through like being healed from disappointment was getting grateful. 
and finding things to be grateful about. And, and it's amazing how gratitude like does that. And gratitude is like, it even opens doors, like thankfulness opens every door, you know? And so that's even why, like, you know, that it's, you know, it says like from the ashes, you call my heart to life, you know, from the silence, from the sadness, you call my heart to life. And then just goes mm-hmm. into that bridge and I have nothing but praise to give, nothing but praise to offer, you know, like, because I think, even before you feel it, like when you give God the glory, it's amazing how it shifts everything and it changes the atmosphere. It changes even, it changes every season. And, you know, for me, I, 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 there's been so many moments like where like, you know, where I've felt like so disappointed and God said, find something to be grateful for, prophesy over your future with gratitude, you know? And I think that's right. a great thing for, for people to do. Like if things aren't going right and if you feel like you've been forgotten and you feel like you've been overlooked, then start, you don't need somebody to come and lay hands on you. You don't need, you know, and like that, all that stuff is great, but like you don't need somebody to prophesy to you, prophesy to yourself. Start like, start saying, be, start being thankful for what's behind and then being thankful for what's ahead and what you're believing for because yeah. cause God is so faithful, you know, like, and I, you know, this is just an encouragement for everyone who's out there. You know, when I was 14 and 15 years old, I was writing letters to God every night saying, God, thank you that one day I'm going to write songs that go all over the world. Thank you that you've called me to great things. Thank you that you have chosen me. You know, and, and for me, that was a big, you know, as a 14-year-old who, who I, I didn't have, I was the least likely. I was, I was from a town of 3,000 people. You know, I'm, a, I'm an identical triplet, but I was at the bottom of the food chain at school. Like, it was like, it was like the yeah. kid that pooed behind the piano in the school and then me. Like, and I was like, yeah. um, how am I only one above the kid that pooed behind the piano? That's so weird. Um, and so <laughs> I think it's like, you know, like I just started prophesying over my future and I was like, they're like just the chubby kid that played the tuba, but I just kept at it, you know, and I just kept prophesying and trusting that God was going to make up the difference. And to be honest, he did. And I think for yeah. anyone out there, like, you know, I guess I hope that that's what Ashes but this, you know, that song and even this album, like whatever season you're in, that would help call you out of like sadness, that it would call you out of disappointment, that it would call you out of fear and that you would begin to like prophesy over yourself and prophesy over your future and say like, you know, God, mm-hmm. you have in the past, you've always met me and you will like, and, and like, I believe for healing, I believe for, for provision, I believe for finance, I believe for like, um, like I believe for divine, divine, divine relationship restoration, like whatever it is yeah. that you would just start saying, like I've got nothing but praise to give because you are faithful and you're going to continue to show yourself faithful. Yeah, yeah. You know, appeal to God's nature because he's good. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Mia, you have really uh, met us in a, in a unique way. I'm sure a lot of people are just like, you know, Graveling over an hour worth of one one thing that I'm I'm just feeling that you've offered to us is you're so real. I don't, when people always say that to me, mm-hmm. and I'm like, for, um, for just like, being real, to be real. Like I yeah. think, how do you not be real? Like yeah, like that's the thing is like I think when you like. I'm really good at being myself because every time I've tried to be somebody else, it's like it's gone terribly for me. Like my version of TD Jakes is terrible. Like it's not good (laughs) and it's not convincing, you know? So I think, you know, I think identity is a big thing, you know, and, and I mean, some of the guys at Praise Couch know me and they'll tell me, they'll tell you that I'm exactly the same having coffee with them as I am doing anything else, you know, because it's, too much work. You'll exhaust yourself yeah. like trying to be what you want, what you think people want you to be. And I mean, I had the advantage of being an identical triplet, so I had to fight a little bit harder for my identity um, because I felt like a clone because I have two people that look exactly the same as me and sound exactly the same as me. So I kind of fought, fought for my identity. But like the way that you fight for your identity is you go to God and, and you say, "Who do you say I am?" and and you like listen to what He's got to say and for everybody out there, like God has given you the perfect personality and the perfect um, ability and the perfect giftings for what you're called to do. So like, don't feel intimidated. I used to feel super intimidated that I didn't have like a melancholic personality because we associate that with creative types. Can I tell you, if I had a melancholic personality, I would, every co-writing session we would go in, we would just talk about our feelings instead of finishing songs. (laughs) And so... 
So God has given you everything that you need, and when you lean into who He's called you to be, it's so it takes all the pressure off. Yes. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for really speaking into that. I think it's it's a great word. I'm sure I need to hear it. Everyone listening in feels like, and you know, and if that can pour into our songwriting as well, that. A hundred percent. That's all you've got with songwriting, because the only angle that you've got is yourself. You know, that's the only yeah. that's the only way you're going to give us something new is if you, you give us like something through through your eyes and through how you know Jesus. You know, because if yeah. if you give us that, then like it's gonna it's gonna be something different that the world hasn't heard, which is amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask you to pray for us and all of us listening in? Would you just you know? prophetically even just, you know, give us that word with the Lord um, and and uh, and we'll just kind of close out our time like that. So can I just invite you to close us in that way? Of course. I would love to. Yeah. Well, God, I just I thank you for every person, God, that's taken time out to listen in today, God. And I thank you, Lord, that that time out is never in your in your in your kingdom time out is time invested. And I, and I thank you that that doesn't go overlooked, God. I pray that this, this hour, God, would be like seed in the ground, God. And I, I even thank you for divine ideas um, and divine, like, melodies, things that, like, haven't been heard, God. I pray that you would even begin to whisper them right now to every person, God, and that you would drop them in the hearts of, of your people, God. I thank you, Lord, that we're yet to hear the greatest songs, God. And I thank you even... Lord, that we're all in this together, God, and I like that we get to be part of a, a great big family of worshippers that just want to point people to you, God. And so I thank you for every song that's going to come out of this, God, and every person that's going to be um, daring to step out in faith and like to say no to fear, God, and just tr- and to just try, like to just get out on the waves and just see what they can do. And I just I bless them, God, and I thank you for them in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, Mia. As you really spoken to us well, and uh, I'm, sorry, I'm just a little scratchy here. I'm trying to find places to where I can hear you. Can you hear me now? Oh, you have disappeared. Are you hearing me? Okay, I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, there you are. You're good. You're good. Okay, I'm sorry. But th- I just want to say thank you so much, Mia. I'm super encouraged. I'm sure everybody is, um, you know, really encouraged and inspired in our, in our, um, you know, world of songwriting. So thank you so much, and God bless you as you continue. Love you. Let's gonna... do this again soon. Okay. Thank you very much. We'll let you go. Thank Love you very God. much. Bless right, you. Okay, bye then. See you later. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Thank you, those of you who have stuck with us. If you only knew how I was battling to keep this whole thing alive as I'm, like, you know, walking all around a park. I don't know what's going on with my phone, but Mia carried it super well. I'm really pleased, and uh, I hope you're all very encouraged by this time that we've had together. And, um, And I am going to sign off from here. So God bless you all, and we'll talk to you again.